Hello, I'm broadcasting legend Rick Mercer. You're listening to The Dean Blundell Show on 102.1 The Edge. Some of the material you hear on this program may not be suitable for everyone, like you, in the car with your kids in the back seat. Please do not blame DBS if your kids go to school and they start calling their friends and wallets. Listen with discretion. Thank you. The Dean Blundell Show. Going dick head free. Pinchy minus 10. 9. 8. Seven, six, nine, six, nine, six, nine. The Dean Blundell Show. Dean Blundell and Todd. Those are the only guys that when I listen to them, I'm just howling on the way to work or school. Like, I've never laughed so hard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> the Dean Blundell Show. 102.1. The well, well, well. Hmm. <laughs> the words of the hives hate to say I told you so. All right. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, 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 uh. McGinty quit yesterday, the premier of the province for nine years, the mega dickhead. I was just listening to his speech uh, here this morning and uh, realized how little this guy's done. Uh, he sat and talked about, here, I'll play you a bit of it. Okay. okay. Put my computer. I'll play a little bit of it. Uh, McGinty quit yesterday. It's a no, no stranger, uh, folks. Uh, he sent people even to the radio station to ask me to stop hating on him. And it wasn't that I hated on him. It's just that I hate him. Um. Because he's a liar. He's a liar and he stole money and, and now he got caught with his hand in the cookie jar and he's going to be in big trouble because of these two power plants and hiding papers and um, these these bills he's trying to get passed. Is to, he, we've never had more debt. Ever, ever, ever. Never. He's done nothing for the education system, but you got to listen to him talk about how awesome he is. We've made our workforce the strongest and our taxes very competitive. Well, by the way, we've never been taxed more, ever, in the history of this province. Never, ever, ever. We are taxed almost, I think, more than any other province. So good. our tax is competitive. I hate this guy. He is such a liar. Anyway, listen. <laughs> We're renewing our infrastructure, and we just keep creating jobs. Ontario has recovered all the jobs we lost in the recession, plus 34% more. It's also not true, by the way. So we've regained 134% of our jobs. In the U.S., it's 49%. Here, it's 134%. So we've done more than simply halt our race to the bottom here in our... Whatever. Throughout, we've made mistakes, we've fixed them, and we've learned from them. But I am saying that when it comes to the big things, those things that families absolutely have to be able to count on, their schools, their health care, their environment, and the economy, we've always gotten the big things right. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy you to go with your guy? band of followers, eh, to have them clap at everything. <laughs> did you hear that? I, I, well, we screwed up totally, but we did the good, the big um, stuff. Is we did that pretty good. Couple things were all right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 He's such a piece of crap. Anyway, yeah, you're right. You, you get all your friends there. Yeah. It's easy to look like you, what you said was really important. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> and they're still even hesitant. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. just get distance herself from this knob. <laughs> just say it, quit. Oh, and they clap forever for no reason. No reason at all. Just a few hours ago, our Minister of Finance gave us an update on the state of the Ontario economy. And once again, we are ahead of schedule when it comes to our plan to balance the budget. In fact, I've learned we have beat our budget forecast in seven of the last nine years. Congratulations to all of you. Oh, by the way, each one of those uh, years they ran a deficit. I know. They just ran, they just were, were in less debt than they thought they'd be. That was the same with the report that came out yesterday. It was like $400 million less, but it's still $14.4 billion. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean. <laughs> so I feel very good about where we stand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. This is almost like, you know when you, you know a guy's lying? And you're sitting there listening to him lie, and he just the lie just keeps getting longer and longer and bigger and bigger. Every time he speaks, I think this. Every time. Both as a party and as a province. Our top priority these days is, of course, the economy. This means we've got to eliminate the deficit. Come on, where's the part that he quits? That's the part that I want the most. <laughs> uh, 
to sit down with our labor partners and see if we can negotiate wage freeze agreements. Not unlike what we've done for 80,000 public sector workers so far. Once again, it's a lie. Secondly, we're going to continue to reach out to the opposition. Come on, where's the part where he quits? <laughs> this caucus is the most talented, hardworking, and dedicated group of people I've ever had. He said caucus. Oh, and it's hardworking. <laughs> to work with every single day you keep proving yourselves and i'm very very grateful for all the support that you've given me we've come a long way come together on, we've made like tremendous progress too. in getting ontario 12 minute quit speech oh no and the only race it should ever compete in and that's the race <laughs> to the top okay which mountain as the party and as a government which has committed itself to making relentless come on progress, quit we're always looking for New ideas. We're always looking for ways oh, to renew ourselves. So this is how I see it. Are you ready for this? <laughs> what a jackass. <laughs> what a massive jackass. <laughs> Just quit! I love the political humor. As leader of the Ontario Liberal Party. And after nine years as Premier, it's time for renewal. It's time for the next yeah, yeah, liberal quit, premium. Quit, quit, it's time for the next set of <laughs> liberal ideas it. to guide our province Say it, forward. Ew. To that end, a moment ago, I spoke with the president yes. of our party, yeah, Yasser yeah. Nafi. Yeah, yeah. I've asked that he convene a leadership convention yeah. at the earliest possible opportunity. Yeah. It will be my honor to continue to serve you and Ontarians as premier until such time as yeah. our party's elected a new leader. Yeah. 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 I think that means he quit. Yeah, <laughs> he did. And nobody likes a quitter. <laughs> no one liked him when he was working Exactly. <laughs> oh, I don't like that guy at all. No, no, keep it going. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No? Traffic bed? I'm looking for a traffic bed. Yeah, that's what I was trying to. I play him here now. Oh. oh, you didn't know that. I got this little fancy button. I didn't know that. No, yeah, no, yeah. Good. Adam's right. filling in for a drug head today. But it is a race to see which one's higher. <laughs> general scale. Drug head uses the more illicit drugs. Adam just hasn't been here for a while. So I can't blame his stuff on drugs. No, no, no. no. <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe by maybe 8 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, that's some pretty great news, huh? Yeah, that's pretty wild. Dickhead McGee quit. A lot of people are really upset by it, you can see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what I'll do is I'll explain to you all the terrible things he's done later. Then you'll, you, then you'll go, oh, that's why you hate his guts. Mm. Yeah. Easy to hate his guts. 614. You know, you know what it is? It's, uh, it's that uh, it's... He's, he was that guy, you know that guy in high school that uh, no one liked, the, that nerd that told on everybody all the time? Yeah. And then, oh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, you shouldn't be allowed to do that. That's, uh, he's like a hall monitor that everybody hated, uh, but never really did anything. And then you found out later he had a whole bunch of, like, animal porn, like bestiality porn on his computer. I'm not saying Dalton does yeah, it. He no, doesn't no. at all. What I'm saying, you turned out he's got this total dark side. Yeah. Yeah, this weird side. That's he, like, took to. all the lunch money or something. Yeah, that, he took you know. all our money. Yeah. No new taxes. Yeah, like 12 of them or something. Yeah. Well, why is this one new? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's yeah, not man. true. That's not true. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, guy's like, I, I got cancer and you're not helping much. <laughs> that's not true. Get out of my way, <laughs> cancer <laughs> boy. Hi, this is Gilbert Gottfried. You're listening to the biggest ass in Toronto, the Dean Blundell Show on 102.1 The Edge. This... Is your yeah. edge Damn it. Hold it. files <laughs> with Dean Blundell right. on the edge? Ready for some of them edge files? How can you not be? Yeah, da- yeah, daddy. <laughs> yeah, daddy. Yeah, daddy. Baby. <laughs> Uh, youth football assistant coach ran up to a referee and slapped him so hard it knocked the referee to the ground, and uh, paramedics had to be called. These sports things, eh? Come on. Let the kids play, man. 
Broward Sheriff's uh, County is looking uh, for Dion Robinson, a 43-year-old coach who's now on the lam. He's running from the cops after slapping the referee. It's not like he robbed a bank or something. I know. What a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I told him, baby. Coach for the Patriots happened to be uh, recording the game, recorded the entire assault. I've got it right here. It's pretty oh. funny. Referee was slapped. His name is Andrew Keegan's very, 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 very fat. Was treated by paramedics for what appeared to be a mild heart attack. And a sore jaw. That's how you know you're fat. Yeah, you get if you have a heart attack getting slapped. <laughs> In the middle of a... <laughs> <laughs> Here's the audio, though. This is so funny. Okay, so the kids, like, it was a controversial call into the game. Big fat referee's like, no, game's over. This team wins. So the green team's really pissed off. Here comes the assistant coach. His pants are down around his knees. He's so mad. Out of nowhere, he just comes running in. He is mad. Oh, boy, is he mad. Get his pants down and everything. And then... Wow! Oh! Right in the face. Listen. Listen. Get the kids. Get the kids. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that the guy who, hit, who did the hitting? No, that's okay. just the guy that's running the camera. He's like, get the yeah. kids. Let's get out of here. Someone's going to pull a gun. Karen. Karen, please. Oh, it's a great slap. It's right here. You got to see this. Oh, yeah, yeah, here yeah, it comes. Yeah, yeah. Look at pulling up his pants, looking like a fool with the whack. Oh, that's a, I mean, that a cheap hit. That's a totally cheap that's hit because he came out of nowhere. To him. Exactly. That, yeah. Get the kids. Get the kids. Get the kids. Let's get out of here. <laughs> and to think that this guy was coaching in the NFL, uh, refing in the NFL a few yeah, weeks yeah, ago, probably. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably was. He's so fat. Get the kids. Let's get out of here. Uh, he was attacked Saturday after he called a penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct against the Saints. The referee uh, said he had heard one of the Saints' assistant coaches make a derogatory comment from the sidelines. That's when he threw a flag. Suddenly, the assistant coach apparently disagreed with the penalty being called, barged on the field because he mm -hmm. disagreed with an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, uh, and then slapped the ref. That's a horror. That was hard, though, man. Oh, he came out one. of nowhere. But of all the penalties you need to be caught. And then I you know. go out and yeah, slap the guy. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, you know, it's you probably ironic. said something then, didn't you? Well, that means you said something. That ain't true. Um, you know who called that was Nikki. She said a ref would be attacked. Oh, that's like awesome. Last, you remember that? Yeah, yeah. She's right. He was attacked. Big fat guy, too. <laughs> right he had a heart attack after he got slapped. That's how fat he was. <laughs> And according to the California Division of Occupational Safety and Health, a 62-year-old man working at Bumblebee Tuna Plant died after he was accidentally put inside the oven with the tuna around 7 a.m. Thursday. Oh, what a yeah. way to go. Jose Molina was found uh, inside a cooking device. They're called, quote, steaming machines. Oh, oh, Paramedics oh. were called, but the melted Molina was uh, dead when they arrived. Uh, efforts to resuscitate him were issued him. <laughs> oh, this is gross. Were fruitless because there wasn't much left. <sighs> you blow on his mouth. No, it, I don't even know where it is. <sighs> he was that cooked. Imagine being that the last smell you have going <laughs> down. Steam tuna. <laughs> <laughs> Paramedics were called. Yeah. <laughs> His body was so damaged in the machine, he died as a result of being trapped in a pressure cooker. Oh, my God. Uh, this is the worst death of all time. <laughs> I know. Remember the guy that died in the bottom of the outhouse? Yeah, He's yeah. Got nothing on no, this. No, this is Sucks so hard. He worked at the factory for six years and ended up inside the machine, according to one of his co-workers. Allegedly, quote, getting steamed to death. The steamer actually steams the skin and scales off of fish oh. as it cooks. Does so, you know, yeah, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Ooh, it's hot in here. Yeah. Oh. It was getting hot in here. <laughs> it's just the smell. Yeah, I know. The so last one you have, too. So, you make it in the tuna? No, I don't think so. I think okay. they got them out. I mean... Okay. Yeah. Those are your edge files, whatever the hell day it is in uh, October, the year 2012. The Edge Files on 102.1. The Edge. The Texas is in Florida. The Texas is in Louisiana. The Dean Blundell Show. It's going to be category five for greater. 102.1. More about Dalton McGinty quitting. Totally quit yesterday. Premier of the province. He's just like up and quit. He's like, 
this touch. Uh, place needs renewal. Basically, if you listen to his 12 minute resignation resignation speech, what he really said was this. Yeah, I'm in deep crap now, so yeah. I'm gonna just hightail it out of here. I'm a coward. Yeah, total yeah. pussy. That's just. I was a liar. Totally. Could backpedal anymore. Yeah, I can't. I can't answer these hard questions in in uh, in what you might call it anymore. I can't in in caucus. So what he's done is he prorogued government so that uh, he doesn't have to deal with the questions about the two cancel power plants yeah. and all the lies he told. Yeah, weren't there something like 20,000 pages found yeah. regarding the notes of this stuff? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's, there's, it, it's, it's, it's silly how, how he's, the, the lengths he's gone to cover up lies. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I don't want to get into the logistics of it. But he lied so hardcore that he had to quit. Or people around him did, and then no one blames anybody. Everybody just says, it's that guy. No, it's that guy. And then everybody says, no, we need renewal. That's the problem. No, the problem is that you've basically shoved it up our you-know-whats for nine years. Never had higher taxes. Never. In the, it, we've never been taxed more in our lives. And we've never had more debt. So you go figure that one out, Skippy. I was reading some comments uh, uh, yesterday. You know, the, uh, everyone writes things, whether it's on Twitter and newspaper columns and stuff underneath. And some guy, I, I remember one said that, uh, which I liked, uh, it's the biggest shipwreck right now, this province. And he bailed like that Captain Chatino. Remember that guy? <laughs> <laughs> you hear that dude that got off because he yeah. wanted, wanted, wanted nice socks? Yeah. yeah, he got off the boat in that Italian cruise liner that sunk. He's like, Where, where's the captain? <sighs> he took off. Skitino, yeah. get on the boat. No, my feet are wet. I got to yeah. go to shore. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what McGinty yeah. just did. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll have the audio for you coming up in a few minutes. Also, uh, great, and I was actually watching it on, on TV this morning, and it, it, uh, you can get it on Todd's blog a little later on as well, uh, the helmet cam of one Felix Baumgartner. The guy that jumped from 27 miles, 24, 27 miles. High. 39 kilometers. Yeah. Very high. Yeah. It's so silly. It's like my nightmare, too. The, the, the video that you uh -huh. see of him standing on the... That would be the worst part, is getting out on the ledge. He wouldn't even be... Like, if I was on the ledge of that thing, well, we'll get to it in a second, but if I was on the ledge of that thing, I wouldn't be saying stuff like, uh, I think he said something about you realize how small we are when we're up here. Uh, I'd be like, you don't even know how far into my body my penis is gone. <laughs> Forget about saying something they're going to put on a t-shirt. You have no idea how much poop is in my spacesuit right now. The Dean Blundell Show. Dean Blundell Show. On 102.1 The Edge. We we're talking about Felix Baumgartner, the guy that set the world record uh, for jumping from outer space. Uh, 37 to 39 kilometers, I think, about 24, 25 miles. 128,000 feet. He was in outer space. You can see it when he jumps, which uh, Todd has just posted on his blog. But the video... And in, and in this video, we'll play the start of it. When he opens the pod door and goes out, that to me is the scariest part of the whole thing. It's just wild, wouldn't it? Just it, it, it blows my mind because you, you consider a, a human being standing on the edge of this, this, this ledge on this pod 24 miles in the sky. He's in space, for Christ's sake. It's black. The earth is curved. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> like that, you know, let's put it in perspective. There's a human being outside, and the earth, earth is, is curved. Yeah, that's a great way of saying it, yeah. Because when you look down on an airplane, no, you don't see that. So this is the audio. So he's having a hard time breathing. Sounds like Dick Clark. <laughs> We're going to say, we're not going to say, yeah, why in sync with? Ten, nine. Anyway, listen to what he says here. This this wouldn't be my choice of words, but whatever. Sometimes you have to be up really high to see how small you are. That's what he said. So now that's the last thing that could have possibly come out of this guy's mouth. I would have chosen other phrases. Like tells tells people who you didn't like you didn't yeah. like him yeah yeah. <laughs> I just want to tell my ex. <laughs> that was the worst thirteen years of my life. <laughs> just in case you die, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, my kid's second hockey coach. <laughs> 
You can suck it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to the second boss I had, you're the worst. <laughs> Okay, let's go, Deed. We're going to do the jump. No, hang on. I'm not okay. quite done yet. <laughs> Todd, <laughs> I often hate your guts. <laughs> you made the most out of nothing. You owe me huge. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> That's what I'd do. Uh. But no, he says this. Oh, nothing. He already said it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes you have, you have to be this really high up to yeah. see how small you are. Anyway, and then he jumps. He doesn't jump. He falls off the ledge, which to me is... Th- say what you want. When you're in the air, you're in the air. When you're in the pod, you're in the pod. Like, when yeah. you're falling, you're falling. But you have a choice still at 128,000 feet to bail. You'd be like, hey, look at... Uh, listen, I, I got... My pants are full here. I, there is no way I can make it down there with a full set of briskets. I can't. I gotta go. I, I can't. Get me back in this sucker. But did it... Because could that thing... Could the caps have come down? Like, yeah. Just, it could have coasted down? Yeah, you had a choice to okay. go or not. Like, if they said, hey, listen, bud, if you're too scared, hop back in. We'll bring you down. It's like... <sighs> No, I already said something really stupid. <laughs> I gotta go. So then he jumps. Okay. Now this is, you can hear him breathing. Jumper away. Jumper away. And, and it just, he goes so fast oh, right away. It is insane. So I'm going to play this for you. And this is, this is the only known helmet cam view. And he gets the crazy spins in it too. Like you, 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 you see him falling and it doesn't look like he's falling because it's so high. But you see him spinning and his helmet, sp- it's crazy. And if you listen for the breathing, you can actually hear him breathing as he falls. I think he'd be able to hear some wind on the outside too. But. Just going. It's insane. It is. It's still insane. Five minutes falling from the sky. Tops out at like 780 miles an hour. Speed 600 miles per hour. <sighs> Man. Speed 650 miles per hour. Do you think he got laid when he landed? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but about halfway through, it's a two and a half minute video. It's posted on Todd's website. Uh, the helmet v- cam video starts at about a minute 21. Yeah, it kicks in later, yeah. Yeah, and, and it is truly speed record for fastest landfall, too, everybody. Yeah, yeah, that was great. Good job. Clap, you geeks. So this is him falling, but he's also looking around. Yeah, we know Felix. Also, Tom Johnson. (laughs) I had sex with your wife. (laughs) (laughs) Going over. There he goes, and falling right away. Like it it is. Uh. You watch how how hard this guy spins. You wonder how he can pull it out from that high up. You have to be so strong to do this, dude. It's not like anybody can just jump out of this thing. You got to have like that's what everyone's saying now, too, right? Oh, it's no big deal. Yeah. You're just falling down. It's just yeah, a stunt. shut up. <laughs> it, this guy has to be in the best physical shape out of anybody in the world. Do you know how hard it is when you're going uh, a thousand kilometers an hour to stop spinning? Do you know how tough you have to be? Look at him. Just spinning like a mother effer. Oh, that's a great shot of him with his hands in front of the camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His camera on his chest. Dude, it is the best. It it still is. You know, and people are like, I don't know why people want to take the piss out of this guy. Like, oh, you hear people talking. It was just a stunt. Who really cares? It's not a hard feat to do. Are people idiots? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah it's, totally. Yeah. I mean, who cares if it's a stun, a sport, whatever the hell it is? The guy, it was pretty impressive. He's one of it. I, I would compare it to walking on the moon. I'm I sorry. would too. And I actually think this one happens. guy, one yeah. guy jumped from outer effing space. Hey, I don't know anybody that's done that. Nobody. I know a guy that invented an app. <laughs> that's it. I'd use that, uh, you know. 
that opportunity, though, to really say something profound just in case I was going to die. <clears throat> I jerked off at work four times last year. <laughs> Can you imagine if he's like, <laughs> I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> Mike and I from Mission Command had an affair. <laughs> you hear all the nerds go, <laughs> Yeah, I love them. <laughs> I like men. <laughs> also, I'm the catcher. <laughs> Just thought I'd throw it out there. <laughs> Just in case, you know. Anyway, Mom, I'll see you at the bottom, I hope. <laughs> Just in case the pressure makes things explode. <laughs> Hi, this is Jason Sudeikis, and when I'm not hunting quail, I'm doing hot yoga with the guys from the Dean Blundell Show on 102.1 The Edge. I'm just looking at a picture of Jude Law's wiener. What, 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 really? It, well, yeah, it's sort of between, like, in his bathing suit, because he's picture of him as a see-through bathing suit on. It's on D-listed. How's he looking, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Looks Mr. Like Law? A, a little. Tiny little wiener. I guess in the bathing suit, though, is it, is it wet? Is he fresh out of water? Yeah, but I feel weird saying that Jude Law's wet in this picture. <laughs> <laughs> Jude yeah. Law, the man who's, whose hair is growing back phenomenally yeah, well. It's yeah, going, yeah, he's the only man in the world. He looks awesome, though. I think he's a great actor. Yeah, he is I a really great actor. Do. Anyway, uh, time for some open phones. Unless you're emailing your tweets, 416 870 Hi, The Edge. Yeah, hey guys, how's it going? Good man, what's up? Sorry to ask you that, it's just a habit, I guess. But what, uh, how's anyways, it going? That's usually yeah. a good first question. <laughs> I know it's awful though. Everybody asks you. Right. Anyways, uh, I just uh, watched a good movie the other night. Uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. You guys should check that out. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, man. How are you? Well. <laughs> Hi, the <laughs> edge. <laughs> hey, what's... hey, brother. What's up? Hey, man. How you doing? Good. Good. Who's this? Nothing. Um. It's Chris. How you doing? Good, still. Nothing. So, uh, yeah, I'm just on my way down to school. I was wondering if you guys got uh, time for a little short story today. A little sure. Bear story. Okay, cool. So, um, first year of college right now. Last year was high school. Um, we were kicking ass. We were doing parties every weekend and whatnot. So, me and my buddy end up going to a big jam. We're over in one of the other neighborhoods, and we're doing our thing. We're drinking and all, and I guess he gets a little face and ends up that uh, he's staying over, right? Yeah, I regret taking that yeah, story instantly. Hi, The Edge. Hey, how's it going? Good, what's up? Not much, man. I just want to say Jude Law was uh, voted the actor with the smallest penis like a few years ago. Oh, was, was he really? really? Yeah, he yeah. dude. He totally has a small penis in this picture. Yeah, man. I just remember when you, I just hear you guys talking about that. Yeah, a few years ago. I can not remember how many years ago, but yeah. Yeah, he dude, that. you got to see. Todd, come here. Yeah, it looks like a mushroom dude. cap. Oh, looks like I, a little tiny mushroom cap is what it looks like. Look at Look at how small it looks. It's like right there. It's like a little <laughs> button. It's like a little button. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care how great of an actor you are if you dated Sienna Miller. You yeah. still, I'd rather have a bigger wiener yeah, than that. Too, yeah. Yeah. Date Sienna Miller or have a bigger penis. Sure. I'd take the bigger penis every day. Hi, The Edge. Hi, The Edge. Hello. Hello. Hey. What's going on? Not much. What's up? Who did I call? Oh, here we go. Really? Is this Warren? Have you seen my baseball? Yeah, have you seen my wiener? That was on TV this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> it's still so funny. Hi, The Edge. Hey. Hey, man. Got my penis stuck in this pickle jar. You oh, do? Hi, <laughs> <laughs> The Edge. Hey, Dean. Hey, man. Hey, about the uh, Felix jump. Yeah. Could you imagine that he decided that's how he wanted to go? And he didn't pull his shoot? Oh, he just yeah. psyched everyone out? Oh, it'd be awesome. <laughs> you know, it was such a brilliant marketing move for Red Bull too, yeah, because it y- you had all eight million people watch the YouTube channel alone. Just just eight million, just the YouTube channel. Uh, something like another hundred and thirty million watched it on on regular TV, and all they had to do was pay for this pod. But it would be awesome if Felix was like, uh, didn't tell anybody that that's really how he wanted to go. And he told the him when he got doing up there, a thousand. Though? What's that? I mean, told him when, he, when they asked him just before he jumped off. He's like, this is a grand will. <laughs> just want to say thanks for everything. And uh, make sure you get a shovel ready. And Hoover. Because there's going to be pieces everywhere. 
Bianch. <laughs> That would have been a good cycle. Yeah, that movie. is yeah, what yeah. you say before you jump. Hi, the edge. Deaner. Yeah, man. Just a quick comment about Felix Bumgardner. Yep. I just want to say the guy's a champ. I would never jump from space. Total stud. Yeah, I love you guys. Great show. Thanks, Dave. Thanks. You know what? And that and he's right. If you can't give a guy that jumps from outer space his credit, you are a very cynical prick. And, and there's so many people who can't. I, it was amazing. There, there, it was I know. I, it's no big deal, oh. man. It's just skydiving. Yeah. I, used to, I took two skydiving lessons before. It's just a stunt. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even like going up on a plane when my no. ears pop. Like, I don't even I like going on the ears, elevator. Yeah. I don't even like, yeah. like, a, like, a, like a ladder at the edge. Hey, uh, I just want to call you guys. Uh, I sent a video, I think, to you, Dean, uh, just last night, and it's regarding this woman calling about deer crossings in the state, and I yeah. think you guys all love the video. It's how ridiculous this woman is. I just, I don't even know how to describe it. I'm praying to God she's, like, blonde or something. Like yeah, that. a few people sent that, actually, yeah. yesterday. I didn't it's, watch it. It's stupid. Yeah. It's fake. Yeah, That's we don't play fake, fake videos. Yeah. Hi, The Edge. Hey, guys, how's it going? Good, what's up? Uh, I was just wondering if you guys heard that uh, Kim Kardashian has her own comic coming out. Dude, I'm looking. It's amazing that you called because, Todd, if you come over here, yeah, I want yeah. you to see a picture of her ass. She is so I, disgusting oh, the now. The, see the gray dress? Yeah, yeah. The see-through. Look, yeah, yeah. look at how yeah, disgusting well, she that. looks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's got her own comic book coming I, out? Yeah, it was on the news last week that they're saying she's got her own comic book coming out. So She I, is such a dog. I decided, you know what she looks like? And it's only because I watch a lot of tranny porn, Dean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she, looks, she looks like a transsexual. I yeah, think. she totally does. She really looks like, like her face looks like a dude's face. And then, and then just picture like, you know, those would be fake boobs. She's not, she is, I don't understand. I just her don't Her ass get it. is so big and bulbous and gross. And Reggie Bush has got to be the happiest guy in the world. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. These pictures are so disgusting of her bum. It's huge. It's enormous. And, uh, you know, she's got 16 million followers <laughs> on, on, on Twitter. On, no, yeah. no one cares. No, I'm just, it's just insane how, how this care. world gets caught up in that. She looks so gross. She looked good when she was with Reggie Bush. Yeah, and, she looked good for about three minutes naked. Yeah. Yeah. In the Ray J video. And she was on her front the whole time. That's why. Yeah. By the edge. <laughs> hey there. Hey. Um, my guys good? Good, how are you? <laughs> good, good. Uh, I wanted to make a comment when you guys were talking about uh, small penises, mm -hmm. that it can be just as bad on the other end of the spectrum, eh? Big? I've, oh, yeah. I saw one once. It was like the size of one of those like, one liter pop bottles. I'm not <laughs> yeah. And I was like, and I just swore. Um, and I was like, where are you going to put that thing? And, uh, you know. As big I as a like, one liter pop bottle? I'm not joking you. It was absolutely massive. Uh, it I, it's huge. tough. Listen, listen. It is very <laughs> difficult living like that. So don't, don't. And I know. So don't give the guy the gears. Oh, I, I didn't give him a hard time. I mean, you know, he just wasn't putting it inside anywhere. I mean, yeah, he was I get around it. it but <laughs> oh, really? It never made its way to the uh, the cave oh, of love. Oh no, absolutely. Not. You're afraid. You're too afraid. I was. I was only 19. I was like, "There's no way you're sticking that thing near me. There's no way." Now, huh? Who knows? Oh, 10 years God. older. So. <laughs> well, have you have you had like bigger guys? Um, I have, yes, but not that big. Do you prefer, like, because uh, there was a study last week we talked about it. It, it was like six to, six to seven and a half was perfect. Anything um, over would, eight was a little too big. Yeah, I'd probably agree with that as well. But I would even see six is a little small, so. So like seven, uh, seven and a half. Seven seems to be the lucky number, yeah. Sweet spot. How oh, yeah, big would sure. this dude have been? Like, really? Top that can like, size. And the guy was huge, too. Like, he was probably about six foot seven, like a good, you know, 300 pounds. Because he was a big guy. But you couldn't tell that that's how big his junk was when he was just, you know, standing there. Yeah, it's prorated. I bet you if you got a boner, you'd be able to tell. Really? Oh, yeah. It was absolutely huge. Like in inches. Oh, how big in inches? Um, I would probably say it was a good 10 inches, 11 inches. That's it, eh? But, like, it was thick around. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like, it was absolutely Girth. huge around. Yeah, it yeah. was. Oh, yeah. It was very scary. Well, don't, you know, it's, it's like any disability, and, and as someone that lives with the same one uh, from time to time, just wanted to say, you know, make sure that uh, you, don't, you don't make them feel bad when you, when you run it. Uh, girls, this is a good rule to live by, and trust me, it's tough to oh, yeah, no. do that thing. So you've got to use two hands all the time then, I yeah, guess. It's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I need yeah. help.
<laughs> Sometimes I need help going pee. Just an extra hand, right? Yeah. <laughs> Have a little kickstand for it? No, don't get ridiculous. You don't need a kickstand for it. It is a kickstand. Yeah. <laughs> I've also seen the mushroom My leg's the kickstand. What? I've also seen a mushroom cap one too when you were just Oh, just really, really small? Cap. Oh yeah, it is. Amazing. You know, I don't know what the what the equivalent for for because it couldn't be boobs for a, guy, yeah. a woman like a guy with a super small wiener, yeah. or, or like a wiener that's way too big as opposed to just a really nice one. I don't know what the equivalent is or, for women. I think it's when you have like a seven inch uh, thing. Labia? Oh the, yeah, no, no, not even the labia. Oh, the the <laughs> little man in the boat. Yeah, like well, I, I'm exaggerating, obviously, but some like the odd one is just weirdly huge. And oh, long, yeah. and it doesn't. It, it wasn't supposed to be like that. I've I've had some uh, some guy friends say it's um, almost like sucking on Jello. What? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's pretty disgusting. If you're going to have to uh, compare it to that. Yeah, if someone said that to you, I'd be very worried about your nether parts. Better Not than a pudding me. pop. Well, yeah, that you said some me. guy said that to you. Was that about you? Oh, I know. I'd probably kick him in the nuts. But was that you about know. you? They said it. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I just have some really open friends, that's all. Oh, okay. Guy friends. <laughs> no kidding. All right. Well, listen, have a great yeah. day. You too. Thanks for Bye-bye. Much. Yeah. Maybe would it be a, um, like a constant odor Nervous problem? laugh? Oh, her, oh, her, oh. <laughs> right. If, it, if a girl, like the equivalent could, to a small penis on a guy is a chick with a nervous laugh. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Want to go to the circus? <laughs> I paid some bills today. <laughs> you Want to have sex? <laughs> I'm really good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> Not so fresh. <laughs> well. Yeah, because the other stuff doesn't bother me. But down there. I love it all. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> you got to find the right one. Big though. hooters, small. It doesn't yeah. matter. But it's got to be a nervous laugh or a tick or like... Maybe the equivalent is a chick that just freaks out all the time over stupid crap. Huh. No, having a small penis yeah, is probably, the worst yeah, thing ever. Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. losers. The Dean Blundell Show. 1021. The Edge. Yes, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to National Public Radio. <laughs> Welcome to the CBC. My name's Joyce. Be with you for the next half hour. Today we're talking about the environment. Joyce. Yes? I'm suffering from a severe case of schadenfreude. Oh, you're kidding. Mm-hmm. Mm, get that thing over here and then just sit on it. Yes, that's what happens. Boom. Jiggy. Boom. That is the remedy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let me put my faith on it. Cures everything, at least for five minutes at a time. Hi, The Edge. Hey, Diener. Hey, man. Uh, just had a question for you. Yeah. Um, just wondering, uh, with all the guests you've had on the show, uh, politicians, musicians, all that kind of stuff, who, uh, like, coming into the show, who did you uh, feel like you had a pretty good read on being a good person that just kind of let you down? Well, that let Martin you down. Short. Ah. Martin Short was a huge letdown for me because I always liked Martin Short. I remember watching him in Pure Luck when he uh, exploded to the size of a grapefruit. Yeah. After he got bit by the the bee, and I, I used to be a Martin Short fan, and then he was a giant a hole when he was in here. He was just condescending or something. Was, uh, yeah, he, he did. There's only been a few people who've ever done this where they actually get up and leave as the interview's ending. Yeah, as opposed to just sticking around and waiting till you finish the break, kind of, and go to commercials and say, "Hey, thanks so much. Maybe we can have a picture with you or something." And the other telling thing was Derek asked him to do an ID. Do you remember that? Yeah, th- we had like five minutes before he was actually going to come in, and he was in the back green room. And my little studio. And keep my Derek's handicapped. He's I'm blind. handicapped, and I'm playing it. How up. do you say no to a blind guy? Yeah, you know. Uh, and and I said, "Hi, Mr. Short. Do you, would you mind just with? It'll take one minute because it's all set up. Just go in and just do an ID for us, just for the show." And he looked, and he just he didn't move. He just went, "No, no, the interview's enough." And of course, he's a funny man, so I thought maybe he was sort of some no, sort of No, but that's what he did with us yeah. the whole time, uh, the whole interview. He just tried to make it sound. And then and then it was like two days later where someone says, hey, uh, you and your wife have such a great love affair. <laughs> Kathy. Kathy Lee Gifford. And then you realize that, no, it, his wife was dead and it was very uncomfortable. And it's like, it, I think that's karma. 
to his credit, he handled that <clears throat> fairly well. But yeah, that was karma. I kind of laughed. You and your wife are so in love. How do you do it? What's your secret? <laughs> oh, well, she doesn't say much. <laughs> it's the best She's, three years. She keeps it yeah. nice and quiet down yeah. there in the grave. <laughs> <laughs> she loves flowers, though. You give her flowers. She's never yeah. bitching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, she's uh, she's laying down right now. Yeah, probably Martin Short. I didn't. He was just a condescending prick. We've, we've been very fortunate with guests. Yeah, yeah. Most people are good. Hi, the Edge. Hello. Hey. Hey. How's it going? Good, man. What's up? I got the female equivalent to a small penis. Yeah, the f- we were talking about this morning because a small penis is an epidemic. And uh, I wondered what the female equivalent was. What is it? Orangutan boobs. Mm. You know the ones Pink. that hang down yeah. and like you tap them and they kind of swing like a pendulum? Yeah. We <laughs> call those, uh, you know what I call those? Grapefruit stuffed in the end of a sock. Because <laughs> that's what it looks like. Or like a paint curtain with a, you, with a jelly bean on it. <laughs> and you know what's really unfortunate? There's some, like... There's some women, they're like 22, 23. They already get those horrible boobs. It's yeah. really too bad. Yeah. I mean, at least, you know, it's uh-huh. like every, we all have like, you know, you want to have a decent body and then when you're older, you expect it to decline a little bit. Mm-hmm. But if you have it so young, I know. that's unfortunate. That's like God had it out for you. Right? Yeah, you just have to have kids. It's one of, yeah, or, or just tell everybody you did. That's true. Oh. That's a good call. Yeah. That's a good yeah. Call. I got eight kids. Well, where are they? Their uh, child the, services took them away. Yeah. Much better. Yeah, yeah. So where are we going? Why? Because of these terrible boobs. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, the edge. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hey. Hey. So I think that like the, the female equivalent of the small penis is like fat. You know, like one time I was with this girl and she had like you know camel toe. Yeah. Oh, she had like a foot, like a like a camel's foot. Oh, she had like, like no, you call those elephant knuckles. Oh, yeah. Well, whatever. I still, you know, like whatever. I still hit that, but I'm just saying it's pretty big. All right, well, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I still hit that. I thought he meant like at a first. Yeah. No, I think he means yeah. down there. Yeah, he does. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, but. I just still think it's got to be something to do with the boobs. It can't be because like it's genitalia, and they have two sets of them. We just have the one. I just think the boobs can be so easily worked on, whereas really you can't do much with the pecker. He, yeah, I know. Like you got a small one, you pretty much got a small one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and it's major surgery to get a bigger one. Yeah, if you want it, better boobs, that's no big deal. No. Takes you half an hour and some of that gummy worm crap. And put the them edge. On yeah, big time. You can pay for them over six years. Hi, the edge. You can lease boobs. Hello. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. What's up? Good. I listen to you guys all the time. Great show. Thanks, man. Um, I just want to say, I, I saw this honey boo boo thing for the first time yeah. a couple weeks ago, and I got to tell you, the whole family, it looks like something Rob Ford crapped out. Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's, um,. It's just a joke. Here, turn this on for me if you can. There you go. A dollar makes me holla, honey boo boo. <laughs> Did you see that last episode? What were they? I didn't. I, I hate it. A dollar word. makes me holla, honey boo boo. <clears throat> what were they talking about last episode? Rosie O'Donnell is uh, trying to oh. buy them a home now. She is? Why, yeah. why is she taking such interest in them? A dollar makes me holla, honey boo boo. Maybe okay. she wants to get with that. Yeah, trash attracts one another, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine just for one second, dude? Imagine this. Please don't. Rosie do this. O'Donnell and Honey Boo Boo's mom together, naked, in bed, making a video, a pornographic, uh, all, all pig yeah. video. And they're not face to face. This guy on the phone thinks <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Hi, The Edge. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi, The Hello? Edge. Hey. Hey. Hey, what's up? Not much. Good morning. How are you guys? Good. What's up? Uh, not much. You got time for a quick joke? No, oh, no, jokes, no jokes. Sorry. No. Hey, the edge. Hi there. I'd like to get in for a call. Sure. Hi there. Am I on? Yep. Uh, well, hey Dean, uh, I just like to say uh, thanks a lot because I deleted my Facebook yesterday. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I was wondering if you guys could play it down for me, just as a little reward for deleting that piece of crap. Sounds fair, right? Yeah, I'll do that yeah. for, me, for sure. Uh, thanks, boys. Congratulations. <laughs> thanks a lot, brother. Do you feel set free? Oh my God! Do I ever? 
I feel like I can go out and get laid this weekend and not have to worry about what the hell going to come off my Facebook. Exactly, yeah. dude. Dude, that is just a constant source of stress for people. On top of it just yeah. being incredibly gay to and have your own, ac- your own Facebook account. You know, I'm not doing anything. I'm sitting around. What do I do? Go right to Facebook. I'm smart for it. It's just, it's horrendous. No I know. More. It's nice that people like you have the error of your ways, too. Like, you guys understand that, okay, listen, this was really childish and stupid, and I should have never have done this, and, uh, you know, I, I'll never do it again, and I'll get rid of Facebook. But you have no idea the kind of peace of mind that's going to come from not having something creep up on you because you didn't do anything wrong. Well, I feel like how those retarded born again are now, you know? Yeah, Anyways. retarded, like born that. again. Oh, get down, get down, get down. <laughs> Here's oh, for you. Oh, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Oh, oh, sit on your tongue. Oh, 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 oh. It's still gross. It is. Aren't they just like washing a car or something? What are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still confused no, by no that. washing a car. No, no. Oh, okay. By the edge. Excited. What's up, boys? Good hey, morning. Dude. What's up? <laughs> Not too much. Am I on? Yeah. Hey, Peter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Story about uh, the deaf chick uh, back in the day. Can you tell that one? Or oh, you know how long it's oh, been? Dude, it's been too long with that, the deaf girl story. That's why well, it might make sense that it's been a while. I remember people used to request that from yeah. me like every other day. I know. Yeah. It drove me crazy. <laughs> Come on, bro. I'm having a bad day at work, man. Just tell it one time for me. All right. All right. All right. Well, all right. Kidding, you got to play some love music. Thanks, boys. dude. All right. Take care. You got to play some love music, though, because this was a love story gone bad. <laughs> Sugar Plum Fairy. Oh, okay. yeah. That's, uh, that's love. Yeah. I was in love with a deaf girl once, Derek. You might like this because you're blind. You know what? I, I I will admit I've heard it about 15 times. What are you no, talking yeah, about? I, I we used to always tell our sex therapist. Yeah. She hated it. Yeah. We had the sex therapist. I used to tell her the same story all the time. <laughs> that was the best part. Yeah. <laughs> she go, oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but for those of you that may not know, it's no. a story about love gone wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I was waiting the whole time. Was for music. Yeah. Yeah. Just the drugs. My first day. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was in love with a deaf girl for about a month and a half. I don't know if you call it love. Anyway, she had a great body. But she was deaf, so it had its problems. I couldn't overcome them. Couldn't deal with it after a while. So one day I picked up the phone and I, <laughs> and I called the deaf girl. How? How? She had a little machine she used to type into. So oh. I would I'd phone and the machine would click about four times. No way. Then uh, you'd hear some typing and then a computerized voice. Hello. Like, hey, baby, listen, uh, things aren't working out. With us, I think we need to get together and talk. Oh my goodness, what is wrong? Can we meet today? I love you, baby. Yeah, I'm on my way over. Is everything okay? I hope that you still love me. Yeah, we're going to have to talk about that. I'll be right there. Okay, baby. No, honey, babe, babe, babe. <laughs> so I get in my car. <laughs> and I drive over to the deaf chick's house. I think her name was Sandy or Sally or something. She's in here. Vagina. <laughs> I think it was Sandy Vagina. I think I don't <clears throat> or Jill. I can't remember. But <laughs> Close, yeah. <laughs> clicks and pops. It wasn't, I tell you, it wasn't Alan. That wasn't okay, her name no, or Bob. Okay, or okay. <laughs> anyway, she's still deaf, and I'm at her house, and I come in, and I go, hey, listen, it's uh, not working out. You don't have to type, by the way. No, I know. Because <laughs> yeah. now He's it's in person. There. Now I'm there. there. I'm live. Yeah, yeah. I'm live okay. with her. Baby, what's wrong? I go. I can't, listen. It's not going to work out. I, 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 I like you. I, I, I just don't like you like that. You, you got a killer body and stuff, but. The, <laughs> You know, it's the deaf thing's too much for me to get over. Are you telling me? And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, wonderful girl. So we decide to have sex one more time, right? For the breakup sex, I guess, or 
I don't know. She was hopeful, maybe. I was 19. Yeah. yeah. So we started uh, the act. Sing. I was 19. Well, she had a hearing aid in. I don't know if you ever put your head close to an ear with a hearing aid in it. Crazy feedback. <laughs> so I was doing my thing. You're bringing that 19 yeah. too. Uh, yeah, 19. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. Okay. I was doing, but I was doing something. And my head was next to her ear. And all you heard was this. Oh, baby, yeah, baby, the bell cut, yeah. <laughs> baby, no, baby. <laughs> Feedback laughed. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and I'd put my head back. <laughs> <laughs> For like 10 minutes. Oh. <laughs> Until I turned it off. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> Good Mid move, Linda. Mid rip. <laughs> <laughs> Where was your God. finger before that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but it smelled like. Oh, good luck. <laughs> oh, that's where your finger was. <laughs> like, no, I wasn't stirring anything with it. <laughs> oh, I said. <laughs> I couldn't concentrate. And then, then it became a game where you're like, ah. put your head down, bring it up, put it down, bring it up. <laughs> Yeah. Everybody the handlebars? <laughs> it's like a metal detector on the beach. <laughs> Let go of my ears. <laughs> Let go of my ears. <laughs> I can't, it's too funny. <laughs> Oh my God! You know how hard my friends would laugh if they saw this right now. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I'm used as a gar using you like a garden weasel. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! So anyway, that was funny. Yeah. <laughs> you ever hear from her again? Yeah. <laughs> That's a funny question. <laughs> oh, I see, because... Yeah. Right. Oh, you see. Oh, yeah. yeah see, yeah. it's all coming together. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Blue Jays pitcher Ricky Romero. When things get crazy, I like to talk to the guys at the Dean Bundell Show to keep me grounded. Dean's BBMs keep me encouraged throughout the year. And Todd and I, well, we go out dancing in our V-neck t-shirts, and then after, we get shawarmas. Man, are those tasty. This is the Dean Bundell Show. 102.1. The Edge. This is your yeah. Edge it. Hold it. Files <laughs> with Dean Blundell right. on the Edge. Uh, more, did you hear about this guy? Stabbed his grandmother 111 times and disemboweled her. And the police came in. He was dancing around with parts of her around his neck. Just terrible. I, it, folks, this is gross. I want to say this right now. If, if, you're, if you're squeamish, you, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they're saying that uh, the man is named Zach Weston stabbed his grandmother 111 times. Her name was Joyce Honey Dexter. Who stabbed someone named Honey? Well, she did have the name Dexter in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, apparently, the 21-year-old uh, was covered in blood, standing over her, uh, holding a knife with uh, different parts of her. Uh, I don't want to even get into it. It's so gross. Um, and uh, when the police came in, he, he was all, like, dancing around and stuff. And I asked what he did. He goes, oh, just help my grandmother into the next universe. Wow. Yeah. Mm. That is not how you do it, I don't think. Oh, and she probably didn't have long to go. <laughs> oh, she, no, she didn't. She was, like, 84. Yeah. <laughs> She's obviously tough because 111, that's a lot. Can you imagine? Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, I don't know if it was the 111th one oh, that did that it. Did the, oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 He's obviously <laughs> uh, No. <laughs> what a, 
<laughs> yeah, no, she's not. Maybe her skin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's very tough. <laughs> Extremely tough. Anyway, uh, when the police asked the guy why he did it, he said he wanted to take his grandmother into the next universe. Uh, good work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Job done. Yeah. She's uh, in the next universe. Uh, she also said that uh, she, and this is it, this is uh, bizarre. He also said that his grandmother said uh, she he was to invite whoever came in in and uh, give him some cookies and stuff. Grandmother, right to the end. Wow, oh, yeah. so sweet. <laughs> Honey. Dexter. And a South Carolina oh, man has yeah. been accused of cutting off a person's hand so he and two others could collect an insurance payout. That's a good one, eh? Um, back in 2008, uh, uh, this has been an investigation going on for like four years. People are losing their jobs, watching investments dwindle, uh, perhaps the result, desperation of this guy. Uh, it, it, the plan it hatched by 34-year-old Gerald Harden and two unnamed people. Harden used a pole saw, a small chainsaw <laughs> attached to a pole normally reserved for uh, removing tree limbs to uh. saw the hand of an accomplice off. After a trip to the emergency room, doctors unsuccessfully tried to reattach the hand. Conveniently, a member of the group had the foresight to take out three death and dismemberment policies mm, uh -huh. right before, oh, two weeks before ah. accidentally sawed his hand off. The group netted over $671,000, which they divided between them. Don't you think the guy that has his hand cut off should have got most of it? A hundred percent. He's at least entitled to, you know, two thirds while each split yeah. the last third. Yeah, yeah. It's unclear what spurred the investigation by the FBI, but sufficient evidence was gathered. And yeah, uh, two of them squealed and said, yeah, he, we cut his hand off because we wanted the money. Uh, the guy whose hand has been cut off, it'll come in handy in prison, though. Won't it? <laughs> Maybe you should find $250,000. Oh, but, oh, just a little bit more than the share they got. <laughs> yeah, he's, so he's down to zero. <laughs> Without a hand. <laughs> <laughs> you did not think this through. <laughs> Those are your edge files, whatever the hell day it is in October of the year 2012. Yes! The Edge Files! On 102.1, The Edge! This is the D. Bundell Show. <laughs> McGinty quit yesterday. Pussy! <laughs> <laughs> now, we know some things. We know a thing or two about politics, but nobody knows more about the world, and especially politics here at home, than our Jonathan Rundle, Derek. Yes, yes, and he's, he's uh, live uh, via satellite from, uh, from Queen's Park, of all places, and he has a very interesting report about the aftermath of the announcement yesterday by McGinty. Is he, uh, Jonathan, you there? Dean, it was an eventful day at Queen's Park in Toronto as Dalton McGinty, to the surprise of many, announced that he is stepping down as the Liberal leader, relinquishing his role as Premier following an upcoming Liberal leadership convention. It's time for the next Liberal Premier. And though what happens in one province in Canada normally doesn't make a ripple around the world, many observers in the global community were stunned by the international attention this announcement has garnered. Within minutes, accolades and messages of congratulations began to flood Premier McGuinty's office. Dean, as I'm looking at the table with all the cards and gifts and well wishes, one thing is alarming me a bit. Where these cards and gifts and well wishes uh, are originating from from worldwide, for example, the very prominent large card here says, A to go, Dortmeister. Though nine years as leader isn't a really long time, eh? You fought the good fight. Signed, your Syrian BFF, Bashir al-Assad. And underneath in quotes it says, B ass. Obviously a nickname the two have established over time. Some more well wishes for Dalton McGinty here on the table. Uh, Oh, there's some nice flowers here from Kim Jong-un from North Korea. Yoon Tain Sen from Miramar. Oh, Robert Mugabe sent a signed picture. That's nice. Oh, and here's, look at this. They've set up a TV monitor, Dean. Uh, uh, there's going to be a message coming down via satellite uh, from a world leader. I'll translate it for you. Sean Yang, 
Oh, I recognize who this is. It's Mahmoud Ahmadinejad from Iran. I didn't know they were friends. The news of your departure is saddening, but Dalton, you gotta do what you gotta do. I get it. Two thumbs up, you old son of a bitch. Oh, now they're bringing something in from Mitt Romney. So, Dean, as Dalton McGinty prepares to leave the Premier's office, one terrifying question remains. After nine years of being dishonest with the people of Ontario and building questionable relationships around the world, what will Dalton McGinty do next with his questionable skill set? And the terrifying question has a terrifying answer. Federal politics. But you won't be uh, rid of me so easily. From Queen's Park, Jonathan Rundle, Dean Blundell Show. Him and other dictators. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? Yeah. He's well connected, that Except guy. Except they're not pussies. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that, that Gaddafi guy yeah. stayed right to the very yeah. end. They go after the, he, he, he got a shiv in the <laughs> butt crack. <laughs> Is it? Uh, do you think I get in trouble if I said it'd be great if uh, if maybe McGinty got Gaddafi'd on the way out? <laughs> Who's to say he didn't? <laughs> in a different kind of way. <laughs> Good one. Bored, lonely, hard up. Use your free hand and follow the boys on Twitter. At D Blundell Show. The D Blundell Show. One hundred two point one. Yeah, ain't nobody got time for that. <sighs> do it. Seriously, do it. Don't, 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 don't. don't. Still the greatest clip ever. <laughs> hey, this one. Don't, 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 don't. Oh, man. <laughs> anyway, time for What's Wrong With You. 416-871-870-3343. The most effed up person wins. Hey, The Edge. Hi. Hey. So I had an accident in high school. I was in the high jump, and all my friends were um, egging me on to try to jump over a chain link fence. And I finally got up the courage to do it, and I got up and almost over the fence, but the chain link fence caught my nuts and ripped off half of my nuts. Half your nuts, or half of one nut, or a nut? I lost a nut in the deal, but like, yeah, I ripped open the sack, and then um, one, one of the, the nuts, nuts fell out. Yeah. So you only got one nut. I only have one nut. My friends call me Hopper. Halfer. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of imagination there. At the edge. Good morning, Dean. What's up, brother? I called for what happened. Yeah, what's wrong with you? Same thing. Okay. Uh, we're at a stag party. Uh, we did it for my friend in Niagara Falls. Hey, everybody. Felix Baumgartner's on the show. <laughs> <laughs> you have the best phone ever, by the way. Yes, thanks. Yeah. yeah I'll put it back on a regular phone. That's okay. So... Uh, we we had a stag party for a buddy of mine. We did it in Niagara Falls. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so I climbed out of the pod. No, <laughs> we were at the hotel and uh, we finished eating and everything and uh, had a huge dinner at all you can eat buffet. And then we met these two girls at the hotel. So we decided to go to the club with them. They asked, you, can we come with you guys? Yeah, sure, sure. Did. Did. So yeah. I'm standing, we're standing in line, standing in line. I had the worst farts ever. The worst. Mm. Right? So right. I'm standing in line to get into rumors. And uh, mm. all of a sudden, it wasn't a fart. Next thing you know, Pooped. it's dribbling down yeah. the leg. Yeah. And no. girls are like, see you later. Girls are like, see you later. Yeah, it wasn't too good. Anything else? No, that's basically it. <laughs> oh! I figured. Hey! Hey! Come on. It's so boring. <laughs> Damn it. At the edge. <laughs> hey, Luke. Hi, I'm calling for the what's wrong with you? Yeah, what's wrong with you, babe? Um, I work for a major transit system here in Toronto. Yep. Hmm. And I was down at head office for disciplinary reasons, and I've been... What'd you do? What happened? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I told the customer on the bus where to go and what to do when they got there. Oh, you're a bus driver? Yeah. And you had a dickhead. Did you see the video of that girl oh. getting punched by the bus driver? No. It is absolutely oh. insane. It's in the state somewhere. So it's a, it's a black girl and a black bus driver, and the black girl is just dropping all kinds of end bombs and calling on the bus driver. And the and the, the bus driver goes, "You want to act like a man? I treat you like a man." And he uppercuts her <laughs> into next week. 
Now, I you should never lay your hands on a woman. However, I feel the pain, and it, that's not the point. My point here is, is that it's amazing what uh, you, customers of the TTC can say to people driving them somewhere, and you guys have no recourse. So when you tell some, when you stick up for yourself and you get in trouble, it must feel like crap. It did. Fortunately for me, um, there's a member of management who's married that I've been messing around with for a few years. I happened to have a piercing, and uh, he had a tongue ring, and he got caught on my piercing. Oh, he coupled up to you. Oh, what an interesting and, uh, place to be caught at. Hmm. I had to call my union executive board member to come and untangle us. You're kidding. No. So you didn't get in trouble? I got my job back. Yeah, hmm. Bet you did. Did he get fired? No, he didn't. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. I love you. Oh, that's a great lesson. Yeah. yeah. Always fool around with a superior for yeah. job security. <laughs> yeah. 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 Piercings. So. I've been doing it with Dean for years. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love Todd's mouth. Okay. At the edge. Yeah, Colin, what's wrong with you? Yeah, man, what's wrong with you? Uh, see, I got divorced because my ex wife had an affair with my brother. I got diabetes. I had a bisectomy when I was 26. I've had two heart attacks, and I drive cab, and I live in Hamilton. You win. <laughs> yeah, I just said Hamilton. <laughs> Well, Stony Creek actually is a suburb. Huh? Actually, Stony Creek, but it's a suburb of Hamilton. Close enough. I get it. So yeah. go over that laundry list of terrible things uh. that your life is again. I got divorced uh, in 96. Because your wife, wife's screwing around with your wife, brother. I had to fair my brother. Yeah. And then Are they still together? No, she oh. divorced him, took all his stuff, too. Oh! <laughs> what a- good, thing was, good thing was, she didn't have to change her last name. She didn't have to change her last name. Yeah, Wilson the Wilson. Inga may, <laughs> may be focusing on the wrong stuff here, yeah. but that's okay. <laughs> so, your wife screws around with your brother, takes half of your stuff, then takes half his stuff, and no, then and all the, the stuff. No, no. When you go to family court, there's no half. There's if she's got the kids, she gets the dog too. Oh, okay. So <laughs> you got uh, you both, you and your brother get screwed over by the same chick. Yep. And then you got diabetes. I got diabetes. I had two heart attacks six years ago at 43 years old. Yep. I drive taxi and I live in a suburb of Hamilton. Are you are you really fat? Yeah. I was. I lost a boat. Off. I used to weight over 320. I'm down to 182. Because oh, of the diabetes. Oh, that's probably what caused it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great weight loss plan. Yeah. That's, that's, probably what, that's probably what caused a heart attack, too. Yeah, yeah. it's a cycle of life, man. You eat, yeah. you get fat, yeah. you get diabetes, and then you, you lose the weight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was just minding my own business. Bam! It's the Dean Blundell Show. I was like, boom! It was coming up, boom, boom! Everyone was like, yeah! The Dean Bundell Show. Reality hits you hard, bro. On 102.1 The Edge. Time for your phone calls. Yay. Hey, All right. Hey, you, you call us. We put you on the radio. It's a pretty easy deal. Let's go to the phone. Let's hear from hey, the Edge. Bell. Hey, Dean. I hey. called earlier. I think I got lost. I was in the valleys of game. Yeah, what's up? I was asking about the girl in Conquitlam. Oh, Amanda Todd that uh, killed herself. Oh. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's okay. Um... Now, I, I got to tell you, and I, this is the honest truth. I know she was bullied, and I know she put her whole story on YouTube because I watched her little slideshow with all the things. Yeah. Okay. And, um, and apparently she had this kind of crazy stalker that would make her do stuff online. Is that correct? From what I read, he, he knew a lot of personal stuff about her, like address, family. So I guess she felt threatened that she had to do stuff. Yeah. That's what I read when it first came out. Because as a parent, after your child dies, which is enough, people still bully her on Facebook and stuff, which is disgusting. Oh, they're still at it, are they? Yeah, but that's now, classy. Now they're saying anonymous is saying that they've outed a manitod stalker. Yeah. So. And who is it? Did they say who it is? Not they yet. No. Pick someone in their thirties. They, they yeah, they've named a Vancouver area man saying online post. Uh, anyway. I, I, I hope that guy, I hope he goes to jail and just gets demolished. Can you imagine? Yeah. The guy's 30. He was even in contact with a 15. Like, she was 15. She was grade 7 at the time. So oh, she was like 12. Day, like 12. Good God. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> no, no, it's it, it's a terrible story. The whole thing is terrible. The way it started was terrible. And uh, yay anonymous. Yeah. No, yeah. no. I, I, hey, listen, I think that's one of the greatest subvert organizations in the world. <laughs> I do. I, I, I really have no... I, I think Anonymous probably does far more good than bad, even though they're not supposed to be doing certain things, and it's a, it's a privacy issue, I guess, but the, it's the government that tells us it's a privacy issue, right? These guys have done far more good than bad, and I hope Anonymous tells us where he lives 
and I hope they help get this prick arrested, and I hope this guy goes to jail, and he gets used as an upside-down pin cushion for the rest of his life. And I hope it's the right guy. I and think, dude, if uh, you see any of this stuff on the internet, people, you yeah. gotta, you gotta help. You gotta, you tell gotta somebody. help out. I think it's a guy. Well, they have. There's someone did a posting of a guy named Cody, so whatever they, they give his last name, but and then they give his phone number. Too. Oh, they do. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> this guy. Well, be he'll right get it. Guy. God bless you. I think Anonymous could be one of the yep. greatest organizations ever. <laughs> At the edge. Hey, good morning. How are you guys? Good. What's up? Not too much. What the hell is going on with this McGinty? This is insanity. Why? I just don't understand. When are people going to wake up and smell the coffee that this is never going to change unless they they make change? Are they ever going to make change? Mm. Well, McGinty quit for a number of reasons. And and see what happens when someone up and quits? Because he's the kind of guy that would hang on for dear life no matter what. So when someone up and quits, they've done something wrong or something Absolutely. bad is afoot. Yep. But he's been doing something wrong for nine years. He's been he's been he's been just sticking it in there, no hork or anything with taxes. Absolutely. Uh, he's been ignoring us. He's been treating people like crap. Remember that dude with cancer? Can we? I just gotta find that audio. <laughs> the guy with cancer goes, "I got cancer, and you're not helping anyone." He was walking around during his re-election campaign. That's not true. That's all he said to the guy, and the guy's now dead. That's not true. That's not true. Yeah. And he kept walking. He didn't even care. He didn't care about people. He talked to, in his stupid interview yesterday. He's like, eh, it's all about the people. It's all about family. Shut up. I, My I, guys, Dean, why, why do people not care at all when they vote? Why do they just don't care? No, oh, they're people well, are just easily influenced, unfortunately. No one takes the time to really educate themselves and dig into it. People but, truly uh, stick to party affiliation sometimes, yeah. which is unfortunate because you really got to look at the guy as yeah, well. Yeah, dude. And I got to yeah. tell you, you know, I, I love John Tory. Uh, he was easily the most honest politician in the world, which is why I loved him, which was a complete failure. It was abject. Honesty was abject. He, he just wouldn't. Just he was too honest. In that world. It, it, no. Exactly. So people, are, um, people can't handle the truth. Right. No, they can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I liked him because he was honest. Yeah. And that doesn't make a good politician. And I, I got to tell you, there isn't one single person when it comes to uh, electing a new premier, hopefully very soon. I wouldn't vote for any of them. I'd maybe vote for Andrea. And I, would, I wouldn't know, vote for Tim Hudak. I, no I wouldn't idea. vote for no. anybody in the Liberal Party and watching now them just disintegrate. I don't even know who else would be up for it. That's a, I don't know. So yeah, exactly. No one does. But I, I, I really like the, the post I saw on a, on a newspaper article where someone compared him to the to the captain of the Costa Concordia, Captain Francesco Schettino. 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 Get the guy who bailed I'm on the ship. getting out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My socks are wet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's exactly he what should feel, did. He should go and watch Titanic and look at uh, those uh, the, the guys that got off the boat that shouldn't have, yeah. that were all red-faced and embarrassed mm. by the end of it. He should go watch that because that's him times 10. Yes. <laughs> that's him with the lives of uh, five to six. Six million people. Starts with the teachers. Oh, I'm bailing. Yeah. yeah I'm out of here. <laughs> At the edge. It's too hard. I quit. At the edge. Morning, Dean. Hey, man. How you doing? Good. Who's this? Uh, I'm just calling to ask, uh, did anyone hear anything about Felix escaping in his pants? Did mm -hmm. that ever happen? I, I actually thought... I, I think he... I, I heard he peed. I heard he peed himself. I, I'm pooing my pants. I escaped in my pants. I think that's the audio. Wow. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. helmet cam. I escaped in my pants. I, I pooed my pants. <laughs> he did? <laughs> I, I pooed my pants. Maybe that's why he started spitting pants. out of control. Because yeah, he pooped. He's ballast. I heard he peed. The video is unbelievable. Todd's got it on his blog. You got to check it out. It's a video of Felix Baumgartner and the at the edge of space. Like he really is in outer space, and he walks and just walks out, walks mm -hmm. out onto this ledge of this pod. Imagine your body going that fast. No, <laughs> like it just. <laughs> it is unbelievable if you watch the, the video. You, you you couldn't imagine because because. You know when you watch a movie in 3D now where some guy's on the ledge? I think there's a movie about a man on one called Man on a Ledge. I can't watch that because it freaks me out. It creeps me out. You're standing on and there's straight down, like like visions of going straight down. If you had a fear of heights, 37 kilometers is a long way. <laughs> yeah, why would you be up there in the first place, really? And then he says something ridiculous after. Like something really stupid.
play it for you. It's it it, it real like you couldn't hear. This is him going out on the ledge. I think he said, "Hey, homos." <laughs> Or homies, I think they would say. Hey, homies. Hey, homies. Wish you could see what I could I see, could is what he said, yeah. And you're right, he sort of sounds like Dick Clark. You've had years of translating, <laughs> yeah. Dick, and that's why you're so good at this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Sometimes you have to be up really high to see how small you are. And this is where you pick up the video. He just jumps. I escaped in my pants. <laughs> I, I pulled my pants. <laughs> I, I pulled my pants. I escaped in my pants. So clear. <laughs> and then didn't the guys in the drawer room yell, get down, get down. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Get yeah. him to duck. Get yeah. down, get down. Get down. <laughs> Anyway, so that was, I know that's not really the video. Oh, it is. No. Okay. <laughs> so here's the rest of it. I'm going over now. And then, and then he falls. Like you, you could, the, 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 the video, the video is yeah. straight down over his head, straight down to his feet, straight down to the earth. It is crazy. And then the video of him falling is awesome because it shows you the curvature of the earth. How many people are ever that high? Oh, the earth's curved. That's how high I am. <laughs> Boom. Gone. Listen to him breathing. That's clapping. Was it his nards slapping around? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, some guy emailed me. He's got his master's in astrophysics. He said there's like 0.9% wind up there. Like, there's no wind. So that's why you don't hear any wind. You just hear him. And then the helmet cam, because he starts spinning like crazy. Yeah, and they got a video of the helmet cool. cam. It's awesome. It really is incredible. I, I pulled my pants. I escaped in my pants. I, I pulled my pants. I escaped in my pants. They cut my wiener. Okay. <laughs> I, I pulled my pants. I escaped in my pants. There's part of the video, too, where he's falling so fast, he's just doing these crazy spins, because that was what he didn't want to get into. Mm -hmm. Do you know how strong you have to be to get out of a spin at, quote, 1,200 miles an hour. I actually or don't. Or an hour. No. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> it's tough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is not easy at all. Mm. Are the edge? Yeah, you, I listened to you earlier talking about your past guests and stuff, especially about Martin Short there. Yeah. My sister was on kind of has got talent, and she was a standby talent in case one of the other people got sick or couldn't make it. And she said that Martin Shaw was quite the sod to her. Why? That they they are made to sign these contracts that they weren't supposed to ask him for an autograph or stuff for a photograph or even make eye contact with him. No way. No, really? Yeah, and, yeah I see she, that. And she stopped him in the hallway one time and said, hi, Martin, you know, I'm a standby kind of thing. And he told her, didn't you read your contract? And just kept walking. Oh, what an a-hole. Wow. You know, total, total, total son of a, you know. Bitch. Yeah, and yeah. she was so upset. She wasn't even on the show. All this garbage was going on. So Oh, he treats people like crap. Martin Short is like the worst guest we've ever had, and he treats people like garbage. Did you see the email Kyle sent uh -uh. earlier? He just uh, said you guys were talking about Martin Short. I was the one that said my cousin used to be a chef at an exclusive restaurant in the city. Martin Short was an absolute prick every time he came in. I have no respect for the doucher. No. That's just, I mean, it's... I haven't heard one yeah. person that's had a wonderful experience with Martin Short. Usually it's just terrible. But if you were Martin Short and yeah. were the third or fourth fiddle in every movie you've ever done, <laughs> you'd be pissed off too. Even the horse was more popular than him and Three Amigos, right? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. No. <laughs> hey, this is Toronto Blue Jays catcher J.P. and Sibia. When I'm not catching baseballs and slamming homers, I'm hanging with the Dean Blundell Show. We race cars, shoot deer, and funnel beers. And sometimes, Todd even helps me rub out my kinks. That's it, though. Just the kinks. 102.1 The Edge. Hello. Hello. Hey. 
How's it going? Good, what's up? Uh, so I was telling you guys about my uh, emergency surgery about my, on my spine. Yeah. I was having serious pain for the last couple of weeks, feet going numb and stuff. Been in and out of the St. Catharines General Hospital about eight, ten times, plus the prompt care clinic. They just give me pills, send me on my way. Finally, I got a nice doctor, doctor saying the man that uh, suggested I go see a specialist. So he got me an appointment within like 10 minutes of me seeing him. Next day, I go see uh, Dr. Kwok in Hamilton. He tells me, come in the next day, I'm having emergency What do you feel like I'm talking to my grandpa? I don't understand where this is going. Yeah, dude. Sorry. That's yeah. okay. Long time listener. Okay. <laughs> I've been trying to call in forever. Sorry, this is the only story I have to call in for you. It just happened over the weekend. Oh, okay. Actually, so did you have some I, back I had, surgery? I had a caption last week or two weeks ago, the oh. big fat guy. My uh, caption was, uh, pick me, Justin. I'm your biggest fan. Okay. You guys remember that one? No. Jesus. Unfortunately, that was we lost unbelievable. The call. I apologize. Hi, the edge. God damn it. Hello. How are you? This is uh, the premier. <laughs> Ex premier. Is this um, Clint? No, no. Yeah. How you doing, boss? Clint. Hey. Clint from Jarvis. What's happening? I'm the ex premier. You I'm are, are you? No. Nah. He's too young. He's good looking. His last name's Trudeau. What are you going to... He's the next. He's not going to be Ontario. He's the federal man and uh, uh-huh. politics. Clint, you've yeah. been drinking, haven't you? Me? Yeah. No. Yeah, right. Clint? No. Uh, seriously, smoking? guys. Smoking? You smoking some dubs? Nope. Not at all. Done. Uh, actually, I'm just trying to get through. I couldn't believe uh, what that guy had to say, so... What okay. guy? McGinty? Yeah. Oh, and yeah. So I ha- I've been trying for about the last oh, half hour, I guess, and Just I calling. couldn't get through, and that was going to be my say. What the hell's wrong with this? <laughs> Telephone line, anyway, so... I just was calling to say hi, and um, you guys have a great day. Yeah. All right, we dude. love you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I ever feel like it's one of those late-night chat lines where super lonely people just get us a call. Like, you call in, and you're like, hey, you there? Hey, anybody Anybody want to be my friend? Do I ever get that impression that that's kind of what this is sometimes? I used to call radio stations all the time. Just because you were lonely? <laughs> <laughs> hey, the edge. Hey, yeah, I'm just kind of bummed out you guys hung up on me. I had a kind of serious story about my back. I'm oh. just uh, trying to get some cannabinoids for my pain. You guys didn't let me finish. Oh, okay, so you, you got to hurry up then. So, yeah, I'm just, uh, the medication doesn't work, and I'm trying to find me a doctor. Go to Amy Anonymous. Amy Anonymous. Go to her Who website. Well, you, you want cannabinoids? Yeah. You go to Amy Anonymous. Yeah, she'll set you up with a doctor. And, yeah. Well, I mean, if it's legit edge. pain. Hello. Hey, Dean. Hey. How's it going? Good. Hey, I was, <laughs> don't make fun of me, but I was watching America's Next Top Model last night with my girlfriend. <laughs> and uh, there's this company that they're uh, trying to compete for. It's called Smashbox. I thought it was pretty funny. Smashbox? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, don't know, I thought it was pretty funny seeing as they're... Just you know, seeing you know. Smashbox, eh? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, the edge. Hello. Cyrus. How's it going, guys? I don't know, dude. It's been a pretty weak day for phones, and your your jokes have not been good. Yeah, this, this won't be a good one either, so... You can take a risk. All right. Gotta sell it, though, bud. Okay, so... <laughs> I know this uh, old Jewish lady, and she keeps trying to set me up on these dates, but they keep being disasters. I, I guess you could say she's uh, yentily challenged. Yentily challenged. I actually kind of like that one. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> hey, the edge. Hey, what about the guy, uh, the bus driver who knocked out that girl? Yeah, it's it's a crazy video. If you haven't seen it. I, I, and you know what? There's too many N-bombs and stuff. Yeah, you can't. But, yeah, yeah. And I got an email from a girl, and I, I've always said you should never put your hands on a girl, but this one girl made a great point, that this woman yeah. spat on the bus driver oh. and tried to choke him out. You're going to jail now. <laughs> <laughs> but so am I, because I clocked you in your face. <laughs> yeah. I think you should be able to stick up for yourself, though, a little bit. He just, someone starts to, oh, but I've never seen someone get punched like that in my life. And give the woman full credit; she got up and kept going. I 
after she was thrown out of the bus. Yeah. She was thrown. Like, you know, say, I'm going to throw you off this bus. That never happened. She was thrown off the bus. (laughs) At the edge. Hello? Hey. Hey, how are you boys doing today? Good. That's good. Uh, I got a little proposal for you, Dean. I got a brainwave, and I'm thinking I'd like to wax my entire body for cancer. If Why? we could get up, if we could get up to, well, because I'm a trucker and I'm hairy, I'm not going to walk for cancer. I'm not going to run for cancer. Are you too fat to so, do those things? Uh, indeed, indeed. All right, all right. I can still play paintball, but I don't like the running part of it. So, so I was thinking. Uh, so, I was thinking if we could get up to about five grand, I'd be willing to even try and wax my eyelashes. I, I think that hurts too much. You know what? If you can get your friends to d- donate uh, up to five grand, I will allow you to get waxed live on the air. But it's got to be your whole body. I'm doing my entire body, everything. Like your everything choda, your nuts, your back, yeah. your dude. Neck, I've done the nards. Yeah. It is your not head, fun. Your eyebrows. See, I'm a bit of a sucker for pain, so I think I'd kind of like that. And I thought your show would be the perfect stage. Dude, if you it. if you set it up, I'll give you the radio station for the morning, and we won't. You know, obviously, you're not going to be able to come in here and do whatever you want, but we'll 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 no, we'll, no. we'll 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 broadcast you getting waxed. <laughs> I thought that'd be pretty cool. All right, so I, got, I got her on Facebook already, and I got a lot of people on board, and I got a buddy that owns a salon; he's willing to. Uh, uh, provide the waxer and all that kind of stuff. Oh, so. he's smart, he'd just give you the money and get the free plugs. But yeah. anyway, that's a whole other issue. <laughs> 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 the Dean Blundell Show, 102.1 The Edge.